Hello again, everyone. I'm O'Neill Williams. Hey, guys. I'm Tony Smotherman. Today, Tony and I are going to review the basic operational instructions for this rifle, the Optima V2. Now, there's one very important thing you've got to understand. This video is going to cover a great bit of information that's inside your owner's manual, but not everything. And there are very important details regarding safety precautions and operational procedures that we will not cover in this video presentation. The video you'll see today is not intended to take the place of you fully understanding the owner's manual. The owner's manual is what you received in the package when you bought the Optima V2. Guys, always follow the safety precautions that should be followed with any firearm. Those are printed right here on the first page of your manual under the title, The Ten Commandments of Firearm Safety. Foremost of these rules are that you always keep the muzzle of your gun pointed in a safe direction and that you never rely on a gun's safety. Next in the manual are the safety considerations that are unique for muzzle loading. There's a lot of stuff here that's very different than with modern centerfire guns. One of the real standouts on this list is that you never, ever load any amount of modern smokeless powder into a muzzle loader. Doing so can essentially create a pipe bomb as shown in this video. Now listen to me guys, never put modern smokeless powder in a muzzleloader. I said that once already. I really do mean that. If you do it, you can be injured severely or even killed. Better keep that in mind. So before you even think about loading and firing a new muzzleloader, please read all these safety instructions. You know, it's always better to be safe than sorry. So if you're all set, Let's get to the fun stuff, the features of the Optima V2 rifle. First and foremost, your gun is a brake action muzzleloader. Now what this means is that the barrel and receiver are joined by a pin that makes the assembly essentially a pivoting hinge. By pulling the breech lever, the barrel will pivot or break open, revealing the breech plug. Now this design makes your gun easy to prime, easy to clean, and even easy to unload. And the CVA's unique quick removal breech plug, or QRBP, can be removed with just your fingers, even after the gun has been shot several times. The ignition system uses a 209 shot shell primer to ignite the charge, and the 209 inserts right into the breech plug just like this. All CVA rifles are magnum capable, meaning they are safe to use with muzzle-loading propellant charges up to 150 grains. Now that's the big stuff. Now, Tony, identify the individual component parts of the Optima V2. Will too, brother. Be glad to. Let's start with the buttstock. And to reduce the recoil, we've installed a crust zone recoil pad. This is your sling swivel stud the breaching lever, which is integral to the trigger guard, the trigger, the hammer, which has a reversible cocking spur so that it will work for a righty or a lefty, the quick release breech plug, the Duracite scope mount, which comes standard on most CVA models, the forestock or forend, the front sling swivel stud, the fluted barrel, in this case, 416 grade stainless steel, the thimbles, the solid aluminum ramrod, and the muzzle, which is recessed for easy loading. That pretty well takes care of the Optima V2 rifle, but here's something really cool. A pistol, an Optima V2 pistol. Tony, show it to us. That's right, my man. Firstly, all the features on this Optima V2 pistol are the same as the Optima rifle. It has the same breaching mechanism, same hammer, and same breech plug. The only real differences are the pistol grip instead of a buttstock, and of course, the shorter barrel length. So no matter whether you're on a hunt or headed for the range, and whether you're using a CVA Acura, Optima, or the Wolf, here are the things that you'll need to do first before you load and shoot. First thing we need to do is just a basic inspection of the gun. First, just Pull the breaching lever to open the action, like this. 
Next, remove the breech plug by turning counterclockwise. Verify that the gun is unloaded by looking down the barrel. If you can't see daylight, it's loaded. If there is a load in the barrel or an obstruction, just push it out with a ramrod. Also, make sure there's no rust, fouling, or grease in the barrel, and if so, give it a good cleaning. Now, make sure the threads of the breech plug are well covered with breech plug grease, then reinstall it. Then check the function of the hammer, the firing pin, and the trigger. To do this, just hold the trigger back, then press the hammer forward with your thumb, and then release it. The firing pin should move freely out and back into the frame as you do this operation. The pin should never extend beyond the face of the bushing when the hammer is at rest. If it does, you should not fire the gun until the firing pin assembly is cleaned, lubricated, and is functioning properly. Thanks, my man. Now I'm going to go into the procedures how to properly load and shoot your CVA brick action muzzle loader. Okay, guys, we've already checked to make sure this gun is not loaded. I'm going to run a dry patch down the barrel to make sure all rust preventative and our oil from the last cleaning is removed from the barrel. Then I'll fire three primers to make sure the fire channel is clean of oil or debris. And here's a tip by holding the muzzle near a leaf or some loose dirt, you can see if the fire is making it through the breech plug. All right, now I'm ready to load. I'm shooting a standard charge, so I'll drop two white hot pellets down the barrel. Now, of course, I could have used any various propellants, but white hots are my favorite. Each pellet is 50 grains each, so this is a 100 grain charge. I'm loading a power belt, Aerolite 270 grain bullet, and I place the bullet into the bullet guiding muzzle. Short start it with my power belt bullet starter. Then with my ramrod, I push the bullet the rest of the way down the barrel until I feel it seat firmly on the propellant. Now I'm ready to shoot. So I prime the gun with the Winchester 209 primer, take aim, cock the hammer, and fire. That sounds simple enough, but what if I don't want to use pellets? I want to stick with loose powder. Does that complicate things? Well, Neil, it does change things a little bit. When you use loose powder, you got to use a powder measure just like this right here. Pour your powder down inside here and get your grains that you want, 100, 120, 80, whatever you want, and then pour this charge down the barrel. Now, guys, if you're using blackhorn propellant or any other loose powder, it is best to use a CVA blackhorn breech plug which is designed for loose propellant rather than pellets. This breech plug will give you faster and more reliable ignition for all loose propellants. Before you load up for the next shot, do you have to clean the barrel? Well, Neil, normally when I'm on a range, I'll always run one damp patch down the barrel just to make sure the bore is consistent. But when in the field, I don't really have to do that if I'm using the power belt bullets. Ooh. You know, the great thing about using power belts is when you're in the field, you can reload without ever cleaning the barrel. That's because of the way the power belt is designed. Undersized when loading, but it expands upon ignition to full bore diameter. And the power belt base leaves no plastic residue behind in the barrel because it does not extend up the side of the bullet like a sabot would. All right, Tony, how about sabots? Are sabots okay to shoot in CVA rifles? Oh yeah, man, absolutely. There's a lot of them out there on the market that shoot great. Problem is they require a little more barrel maintenance. Okay, so now that we've shot the gun, now we have to clean it. Absolutely, but that's the great thing about the break open design. They're easy to clean. Mm -hmm. And here's what you need. A barrel brush, foaming bore cleaner, a ramrod, parts soaker, rust prevent patches, and spray gun oil. And here's how you use them to clean your muzzle loader. I always disassemble the gun for cleaning and then start with the barrel. First, I get my ramrod set up by adding the extension. Then I put my brush on the other end and I brush the barrel to loosen the fouling. Next, I remove the breech plug and place it into the parts soaker. Next, I spray barrel blaster foaming bore cleaner down the barrel and I give it a few minutes to do the dirty work. Then I take the brush off of the ramrod and replace it with my palm saver ramrod handle. 
then run several dry patches through the bore until they come out clean. Apply breech plug grease to the clean and dry breech plug and reinstall it into the barrel. Rust prevent patches are the finishing touch in barrel cleaning. Just run one patch back and forth through the barrel and you'll have no problem with rust forming in the bore during storage. Once that is done, I spray down the exterior with the oil, wipe it down, and my barrel is ready. Then I remove the firing pin bushing using a flathead screwdriver. After that, I take out the firing pin spring and firing pin, and I place them in the parts soaker. After a few minutes, I take them out, wipe them dry, and then reinstall them in the reverse order that they came out. <laughs> Next, I spray down the exterior metal with oil and wipe it down good. My gun is now ready to store away. And now, Neil, you know, we have both learned the hard way a few times. Proper gun cleaning on a muzzleloader is much more important than on a center fire. He's absolutely right. There's stories to be told. <laughs> We're I won't keep tell, that you, now. Keep won't it tell down. you now. You got to remember that muzzle loaders are important to clean because real black powder and most black powder substitutes are much more corrosive than is modern smokeless powder. Therefore, it's best to always clean your muzzle loader the day that you shot it. Now, if you wait a few days about that cleaning, you might be buying a new muzzle loader before you anticipated. Well, Neil, brother, that is the best advice you can give anybody out there. And guys, that's about it. We're about to wrap up everything for the Optima V2. Now, it's important for you to remember, like when we started the video, this is not a substitute for you reading your manual and understanding it. Do it more than once. It'll pay off. Also, if you go to CVA.com, you can get in-depth muzzleloading instruction by watching our video muzzleloading course muzzle loading basics. Guys, I want to thank you for watching and all of us in the CVA family appreciate you choosing the Optima V2 as your muzzle loader. Catch O'Neill outside weekly. I'd appreciate it on NBC Sports, the Destination Network, and Fox Networks across the country. And me, the Traveling Hunter, on the Sportsman's Channel. We'll see you then. Good hunting.